Hey, everybody. Uh, it's four o'clock. It's Friday. Uh, we are having a Motor One Test Car Happy Hour, as, as usual. Thanks so much for joining. Uh, just two of us today, though, we've got some really interesting topics. So I'm Seth Mirsma from MotorOne.com. Joining me today is our managing editor, Brandon Turkis. And as you can tell, he is not in his lovely home office, but <laughs> out, out and about. Brandon, where are you at? Yeah, I am. Uh, feed dropped away a little bit there. I am on the, the side of Woodward Avenue. Um, I'm at Ford's Media Clubhouse at uh, Vincetta Boulevard. Um, and yeah, this is kind of where I post up for the Dream Cruise every year. And there's going to be some news tonight, but more, more importantly, there's been some cool cars that I've been driving. Yeah, so this is a great week and more importantly, a great weekend for classic cars in two distinct areas of the country, right? So Brandon's in Detroit. This weekend, we've got Dream Cruise in Detroit, which historically can be, you know, over a million people, some amazing, amazing cars kind of cruising up and down the road. And and um, every year, a lot of the our friends at automakers, including Ford, like bring some really cool stuff out and set up sort of displays with classic cars. Uh, so there's great stuff to see. And then at the same time, uh, out in Monterey in Northern California, we've, we're doing Monterey Car Week, right? So we've got uh, Pebble Beach Concord Elegance happening on Sunday. Tons and tons of debuts breaking out at the Quail today and tomorrow. Um, so, so definitely, like, thank you so much for joining. But like, if you guys are interested in the newest and hottest stuff after we're done, go to MotorOne.com because there's there's a lot of classic stuff, a lot of like super exotic metal that's debuting, and it's just it's been a really fun week and will continue to be a very fun weekend. So. Um, just wanted to let you guys know again, I already see some comments. Antonio, uh, uh, who's in for a long convo, we're probably going to keep this one to about half an hour as usual. But um, Antonio is watching us, joining us from uh, from Facebook. If you're seeing this broadcast on Facebook, on Twitter, or on YouTube, you can leave a comment wherever you're at. You can ask us a question, and we will be able to answer it. We'd love to, in fact. So especially because this week we're getting to talk about some really fun test cars. So. Um, although both of us have been in some modern metal, uh, the, we thought it would be really fun to talk about a few classic cars that we've driven this week in the spirit of the of the week and the weekend that we're dealing with right now. So, um, Brandon, why don't we start with you? You're over there with Ford. I know that you've got, like I saw last night, a very, very interesting brand new Ford that you're in, but you've also been driving some classic Bronco, yeah? Yeah, yeah. So uh, this week I've been driving a new Ford Bronco Raptor. Um, not that exact one there, but very close to it. But today I spent about 45 minutes driving that beautiful 1971 Ford Bronco. It has a 302 cubic inch V8, three-speed automatic. Uh, it's it's an absolute hoot. Uh, it's it's just it's such a radical departure from anything we drive nowadays. Uh, yeah. But it, it it's it's amazing how similar the two vehicles feel. Like as they're just going down the road, it's. Yeah, it's been it's been a real riot. Um, so, yeah, it. No, sorry. Go ahead. It's it is beautiful. It's kind of amazing to me. I'm so used to seeing the classic Broncos kind of resto modded, right? So they're on lift kits, they're on bigger wheel tire packages, and this one is kind of original, right? Like as it rolled off the yeah. showroom floor. Yeah. So this one is it's actually owned by Haggerty, and I, I believe it's through like the Haggerty's like rental program. You can rent some classic cars from them and take them around. Uh, Ford has had this one out at several events. I've driven it a full of times. Uh, today was the first time I've driven it on the freeway or on public roads. And yeah, I mean, I think the reason they keep bringing it back is that it's such a good example of the breed. It looks very, very original. I mean, it doesn't have the big knobbly tires. It doesn't have a lift kit. It's, it's you know, original. And that is a good little time capsule of how it's... Uh, Sorry, I'm just getting a message there. It's just no a good time capsule of how, of how cars used to be. And yeah, it's a nice contrast well, with the newer Bronco. Especially, you know, like we um, were a little bit more familiar overall with, with kind of classic sedans and sports cars. For sure, we get more time in classic SUVs, especially like this is essentially like the dawn of the SUV era, right? Like this, this Bronco really represented like really one of the first, um, uh, it was just the original sport utility vehicle. 
Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got, you know, we had, we had Jeeps coming back from world war two. We had kind of Land Rover doing their thing, um, but largely not in the U S for a long time. And then Ford the sorry, there, there's a GT 500 behind me. Let me, <laughs> so I should say there, there are other members of the media here. There are guests and they, uh, are able to take the cars out as well. This is actually good because, like, you can see the Bronco now that I've been driving. Oh, beautiful! So <laughs> that's perfect. I'm I'm glad that guy moved. Um, but yeah, so I mean, that's that, that's pretty much been my day is just wandering around and driving, uh, driving some classic Fords. It's been it's been a good day so far. Yeah, and they had some really cool stuff. I, I was there for a minute. I was there for a couple hours last night to have dinner with some of the Ford folks, and I saw I think you know roughly the same parking lot they had. I mean, they had a new Ford GT for a minute out there, and then they had tons of. They, it seemed it seemed like they had every generation of Shelby Mustang at one point in the parking lot. Of course, a ton of Broncos, lots of the new vehicles, and it's kind of just set up as like cool fan service for people who are like walking through, enjoying Dream Cruise. They can just stroll by, take some photos, and check out all of these classic cars, right? Yeah, they. This has been a thing that Ford's been doing for the past. I mean, aside from the COVID years, it's been three or four years that they've been setting up this this kind of fan and media hub and it's always in the same location and there's always an array of vehicles to drive you know last year i there was a 68 gt500 a few years back they brought over a couple of right hand drive uh sixth generation mustangs and let us drive those on the roads so it's, it's always been you know a good opportunity to get into stuff that's a little bit weird a little bit different and to do it in an environment that is you know really appreciates just any kind of cool car um you know i'm sitting 30 30 feet off of woodward woodward right now and you're seeing all this normal traffic but then every once in a while you're seeing something really wild and crazy and you know classic chevy nova i'm looking at a chop top rat, rat rod across the way i mean it's it's just it's such a great celebration of cars like that's that's you know that's why i like it down here yeah, and we saw a little bit of that last night. So, so again, like Brandon and I met up for just a, just a bit uh, last night too. And one of the one of the reasons, uh, whether he knew it or not, is because I wanted to take a look at the the Bronco Raptor, which is you see one sitting next to the Bronco in this photo. Brandon, as he mentioned earlier, has got a different kind of color of it. There's um, a few more over there. Yeah, they're great. You and and like this, you know, with with so many people in town, so many people around Woodward for Dream Cruise. You had that. You were just driving around. It wasn't like you were you weren't posing. You weren't flexing. You weren't like you know driving through. We were sitting in kind of a, an empty parking lot, and still had people come up and asking to take photos with the car and asking questions about or about the Bronco. Right? Like it's it's got a ton of a ton of curb appeal right now. People are fascinated with that thing. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It's it's really interesting. I mean, I my goal for when I'm choosing a car for Woodward is to try and stand out because. There are ten thousand, literally ten thousand cruisers out here, twenty thousand cruisers out here, um, a million people. So like, the the ability to like stand out from the crowd is is really important. And the Raptor has done that like like nothing I've ever driven before. I mean, I've gotten I have random people coming up and just asking me questions about it. And you know, I I'm really proud of like Detroiters are more engaged and more enthusiastic about cars than than in a lot of other cities. Mm -hmm. And even even knowing that the response I've gotten to the Raptor has just been above and beyond anything I've experienced outside of like a McLaren 720S. <laughs> like, people are going wild for it. It's, I mean, it's pretty spectacular. I saw it in the parking lot. And I mean, like, you don't have to know anything about cars to know that that is not a normal Bronco, right? It's got yeah. the crazy fender flares, like really aggressive graphics, the huge knobby tires. It, it's super cool. I, we didn't even really get a chance to talk about it. But like, and I know you've been in it for a while. Is it is it as fun to drive it as it is to look at? Yeah, it's, you know, it, it improves the Bronco in so many small ways that like, it cures most of the problems that I had with the Bronco, but then it also adds a whole bunch of really cool new stuff. The new three liter V6 is there's, there's more power, which it didn't really need in the first place, but there's also a new multi-mode exhaust with like a Baja setting. So it sounds mm -hmm. just wild. I mean, I've, I've seen a few sitting out here and, um, and just the way it sounds, it has so much more audio presence than any of the, the other Broncos. Um, and that's been, you know, that's 
really, really curing one of the small problems I had with it. Uh, beyond that, it's not that much more difficult to drive. I mean, you'd think it's so much wider. It's on a much softer suspension than 37-inch tires, but it's still so, so small. You can really, you know, drive this thing every day. Yeah, I, th that's great because, again, like, it's it's fun to have vehicles that are that capable. Obviously, this is meant to do crazy things like in the desert, off-road, right? Like, it doesn't belong, quote-unquote, on a street in, in sort of suburban Detroit. Um, but that's where people really drive it, right, <laughs> for the most part. So it's good to know that those two things come together, that it's not just kind of a an undrivable exotic SUV. It's something that people can actually use. And, and at the same time, it's obviously still fun. And again, gets gets you a ton of attention if that's what you're looking for. So um, I'm excited for my turn in. I just need to, I, I have to wear sunglasses because there is quite a lot of orange in the cabin is the one thing that I discovered <laughs> last night. The orange accents yeah, but, are off the hook. The, the, the code orange thing is, it's Ford's thing with the Raptor models. And now they're adding it. Oh, that's... That sound you hear is the new Raptor R, actually. Um, wow. With with the GT500 V8 in it. Um, Sounds amazing. <laughs> yeah. So they're kind of going overboard with the code orange stuff. There's going to be code orange paint on the GT. There's going to be code orange paint on the GT500. Um, so that's like a new thing going forward. But yeah, in the cabin, it's it's a little bit a little bit too bright. <laughs> um, and you get it, uh, you know, all over the place. So I, I could do without that. But that's that's a minor complaint. For sure. Yeah. And it's part of the fun. So, um, by the way, this is great. I, I think that one of us should be at a car show the entire time. So we just get random engine and exhaust sounds. But um, let, let me pause for a second. And I want to say hi to Kevin Hawthorne. Kevin, I think, has joined every one of our uh, of our live broadcasts so far. Um, glad to have you from Lakeland, Florida. Good to hear that you've also are seeing some success on YouTube. We'll have to dig into that a little bit later. Um, but let's pivot a little bit. So the car that I've been driving, well, I, I only drove it one day this week, but it was it was a seminal moment for me in my history of, of uh, sports car driving. And actually, you got like a couple of minutes in it. You got like 20 minutes in it or something, too, although my understanding is your drive was not all that great. And that's the um, so so earlier this week, I was in the 1999 Honda Civic Si. So this is a sixth gen Civic. It is the. Oh no, I'm, I'm gonna catch myself. What the fourth SI, I believe, third or fourth SI. Um, um, just like a phenomenal sleeper. This is this was like this is a car they only made this this SI coupe in for two model years, uh, 1999 and 2000. So this is a first year version of the car. Um, it's a classic if you're if you're anybody who's uh, you know paid attention to um, import tuner culture magazines websites things like that um sites like or sites uh i think that there are probably some appear appearances of this car in the fast and furious franchise um we have lost mr turkis so i'm just talking to y'all right now but that's okay i think he'll probably come back hey brandon um, sorry about that internet wi-fi is not uh super reliable today or no worries no, wi -Fi. yeah yeah um but this was, I was also ex really excited. Honda's got a couple of um, classic cars, other SIs and a CRX and things like that in Detroit right now. Um, I was excited to get in this one because this is actually the only generation of SI that I hadn't driven before, right? So every other one I've either owned, tested as a journalist or been in because friends or family owned one um, or, you know, I wanted to buy one and was una unable to. So this sort of completed my collection of, of Civic SIs. And it's such an iconic one. Again, like if you're a nerd about Honda, maybe if you're just a regular sort of car person, this might not be a car that like is high level on your radar. But if you're if you've ever been into Honda, especially like the products from uh, the 90s and early 2000s, like this is absolutely a vehicle that you know a lot about, right? Um, so it's got a it's got a tiny engine. It's got a 1.6 liter four cylinder engine. It's making 160 horsepower. Uh, the red line is a phenomenal 8,000 RPMs. And when you hit that, you know, when you, when you go up to 8,000, it sounds just absolutely freaking rad. It sounds, it sounds incredible. But beyond that, the other thing that's like very interesting about this, one of the really early instances of Honda using its VTEC technology in a car is basically below about 6,000 RPMs. It just or RPM. It just feels like you're driving a normal Civic. It's it's not that slow. Like that's a little got a little bit of a stiffer front end, and and um, uh, you know you can tell that it's got a, a a little bit of a roaring exhaust. But you honestly you've got to cane it to to be able to get even all that engine noise. So, um, 
as you can see in this photo, like I, I stopped on the side of like a pretty good road to drive this one. I had this, I, I you know, did a, a couple hours in the car uh, one afternoon and just really fell in love with it all, all over again. So um, yeah, I, it was I, a I, phenomenal time. I knew as soon as that car was delivered to you, we weren't going to see you for the rest of the afternoon. <laughs> it was, it was, it was not at all like subtle, like Seth's like cars here. Bye. <laughs> well, um, it's so fun. It's, it's such a, like, I mean, you're seeing that now with the Bronco and again, like you're, you're probably going to have a chance to be in a couple different classics over the course of this weekend. Right. Like the being able to sort of rewind the clock and get in something that really is a time capsule like this. And this is only, um, the car had had like 2,000, 2,500 miles on it or something. So it really is a time capsule. Uh, it's it's just a, com a world away from the test cars that we're normally driving day in and day out. I think I think we lost yeah, Brandon uh, again to the to the Wi-Fi. Yeah, Okay. I'm not sure. Hey guys, sorry. Thanks for hanging with us. If you are, I'm getting a few words from, from Brandon every now and again, but not a ton. Uh, we're going to try and get him to switch just to audio so that we can have the conversation, but not the, uh, the lagginess. Turkis, I don't know if you can hear me or not, but we're, we're losing you just a little bit. So, um, and he's gone as far as I know. So, um, yeah, again, like I spent a couple hours in this car. Brandon was right. Like I, I basically took off. I played hooky from work. I drove the SI uh, for the afternoon and then again in the evening. Um, it was, uh, like I said, it's a car that that really just stands out for just how normal it is, like in day to day driving. And honestly, even even from the standpoint of a regular sort of sedan, like the Civic, obviously the interior is very different. Um, you don't have a lot of the tech and infotainment stuff that you would get in a car today. Um, but ergonomically, it works really well. It's very comfortable. The controls are great. The steering is a little bit slow. The steering wheel is a little bit big for a, a sports car. Stuff that you wouldn't expect to have uh, in a, in a you know, like today's SI is a very different experience uh, and a much more intense one than this. Um, but all the all the baselines are really good. Like at the end of the day, like the steering feel is good. The feel and feedback through the chassis is amazing. The shifter is incredible. Like Honda does, Honda does manual transmissions like just about nobody else in the world, and that was the case back when they were developing this car, just as it, as it is right now. Um, so okay. it's just it's this awesome mix. It's this awesome sleeper. I think I'm back now. We got your voice, my, anyways. My, not my, your face. My, my first time doing the remote stream is is not going swimmingly, to say the least. That's okay. No uh -huh. worries. No. Uh, so. The thing that so I had a chance to drive this two uh, a few days ago, and which I was super grateful for. Um, the thing that that surprises me with these older cars, especially, is were humans shaped just differently back then? <laughs> like, because because you get into some of these things, and it's like, wait a second, where do they put their legs? Like, where do they, you know, it, like human ergonomics were just different, and even the Civic, like that was you know twenty years ago, and I found myself like. You know, the steering wheel is in my lap and my feet are like splayed out and I'm reaching for the steering wheel and the shifter is way down by my ankle. And it's just the ergonomics of it are so different than what we're used to now. You definitely have to. It's, it's so much more casual. I, I actually didn't have that much of a problem with the actual space. My thing was, even if it were even if it were a sleeper car that was being built today, they would do something a little bit more aggressive with the seats. Yes. The seats are so flat, um, both like the, the back bolsters and the, the bottom bolsters are basically non-existent. Um, even a, a big guy like me, you slide all over the place when you're really when you're really driving the car hard. So, um, well, and you know. the other thing, uh, and Seth, I mentioned this to you after I drove it. No ABS either. No ABS. Yeah, pretty pretty easy to get this thing to slide around if you uh, I, if you're driving it hard. <laughs> I, de I definitely did that. That was that was that was an adventure. But no, yeah. I mean the, the car itself, like that is, especially that particular example, is just like museum quality. Like mm -hmm. it was, it was in stunning condition. Yeah, I appreciate it, and I know Honda has been doing this for for a couple of years now. I think 
this is a new trend that we've seen with automakers to sort of lend out some of their more like kind of modern classics, right? To journalists, sometimes around occasions like this, where we've got, again, a big classic car sort of weekend. Um, in other cases, it just like, it's something maybe they've launched a new one and and it, it they like to remind people of sort of the roots of one of their models uh, or brands or something like that. But it is really fun to go back and, and I should say this too, I think Honda has been especially good at this, right? Like I remember years ago doing the launch of the current, now current generation NSX, and they had an original sort of, I think like, not not an original year, but they had like a 91 or a 92 NSX uh, on hand for us to drive to. So they care a ton about their brand and their heritage, and they care a lot about, they know that the cars that they built uh, 20, 30 years ago were the things that built the reputation, and they, they're absolutely like, uh, they love to get that message out there again, right? Like that helps their brand equity overall. So, um, yeah, I mean, I... I think we're seeing, I think Honda is probably one of the best brands at that right now. But in general, like, I think especially as, you know, as the market kind of evolves and like we, we look back, you know, look back on gas engines, move to electrification, um, you have automakers looking at their heritage and trying to figure out, you know, how can we remind people of that? And how can we bring that into a new era? And so they're bringing out these products for us to drive and it's it's like i've been saying it's a great taste of what things used to be like yeah well with this car too and and i think you could probably say this of a lot of models but certainly like the the re very popular japanese models from the 90s and early 2000s um i go ahead try and find a 99 or 2000 si coupe in unmolested condition for under like forty thousand dollars now right i, I mean it's hard to have this experience, right? If you're just, if you just would love to buy this car and own it, like you're, you're going to be deeply invested. <laughs> the, I, I will say this, there, there are going to be 20,000 cars out here on Woodward this weekend. And that was probably one of the rarest ones there. Like that's yep. like, like a Civic SI of that year in that condition is just, you don't see it. Yeah, they I don't think that they made a tremendous number of them. It was still pretty early uh, on in the, although people understood what the brand was and because they only made it for two years too, that's, that's very limited. And like everything else, like it's a, it's an incredibly tunable platform, right? Like mm -hmm. the engine, the engine can absorb a lot more power. You could do a lot with it if you were really into either, you know, circuit racing or autocrossing or street racing or anything like that. Like this was a car that had a lot of uh, potential as a tuner vehicle. And so many of them that went that way, they might still be around, but they're definitely not in this kind of original form. And it's, it's always fun to go back and, and, and sort of see what it was like when it, again, when it was brand new, what, what did the car do then? So, um, yeah, I'm all, I'm all for it. Um, we missed a couple of hellos. We've got, uh, iffy, uh, Ani, oh man, Anig Bogu, <laughs> uh, who loves the SI. Thank you so much for, for tuning in and watching. And then, uh, Hoodworth, Hoodworth Apia is is watching us from West Af from from Ghana in West Africa, which is amazing. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope you like SIs. Um, we're probably gonna we're, we're probably gonna have to sign off maybe just a few minutes early on this one, you guys, because Brandon's having some uh, audio video uh, troubles and and. Uh, as much as I love the SI, I mean, I suppose I could start to read you the notes. We're going to, we're going to have some more coverage of, of, uh, some of the fun classic stuff. Certainly, like I said, we're going to have a lot of stories out of, um, uh, Pebble beach and Monterey car week on the website. Um, certainly you're going to see a lot of stuff on there about classic Fords. Um, I'm going to have a story coming up sort of around the idea of SI and some more classic Hondas in the next couple of weeks. So you can check out the website and keep your eyes peeled for that. And then there's um, going to be more news here from Woodward as well. So great lots, point. Yeah. Very busy weekend. Very, very, very no, no rest this weekend. Yes. We can't, we can't break any embargoes or do anything <laughs> like that. But if you're, if you're a fan of the Ford brand, I would say check back in, in the next couple hours to see, to see what we've got for you on motor one, because uh, there's going to be some, some big debuts, um, which will be really cool. Um, and if you guys happen to catch this one after we're we're not live anymore, if you watch this on this, this will go up on YouTube. Um, you can leave a question in the comments, and we will do our best to get in there and, and respond to you then, or maybe answer the question in a later uh, a later episode next week, when yes. when maybe there'll be more of us around and not on location. Sadly, yeah, yeah, uh, the on location has <laughs> been difficult. It's a little rough. Um, uh. 
All right. Well, we'll let we'll let Brandon go. Enjoy a frosty beverage uh, and the rest of the Dream Cruise. Thanks everybody who joined and tuned in. Thanks for all the comments and questions. And we will see you next Friday. Have a good weekend. Bye, Bye guys.